Hi everyone, my name is Tim Stringer and I'm the founder of Technically Simple and Learn OmniFocus. Learn OmniFocus will be launching around the same time that OmniFocus 2 for Mac is released and will feature OmniFocus articles, video tutorials, courses, and webinars to support you in using OmniFocus effectively. Talking about OmniFocus 2 for Mac, I'm excited to finally be able to show you a preview of this major new release that is currently in the final stages of testing and is slated for launch this June. I've been using OmniFocus for about a month now, and despite a few rough edges to be addressed before the official release, I'm very impressed with both the stability and with the new interface. And here we are in the preview of OmniFocus 2 for Mac. I'll give you a quick overview of the new user interface, and then I'll bring in some sample data so we can dive a little bit deeper. Likely the first thing you'll notice is that the user interface has been completely designed for OmniFocus 2. And one of the goals in creating this new version has been to simplify the app to make it more accessible and lower the learning curve. And I really think they've succeeded in this. Even though the look is quite different, I found it very easy to adapt to OmniFocus 2, and it now feels second nature, and I find it's more convenient than ever to use the app. The OmniFocus window has four distinct areas. There's a toolbar along the top that's very simple and elegant by default and allows you to get to some key functionality within OmniFocus. There's a sidebar along the left that allows you to switch between different views, and we'll look at this in detail in just a moment. There's the main content area where you'll see your lists of tasks. And then there's an inspector panel, and this is built right into the OmniFocus window now, so it's no longer a floating window, and I find this very convenient. And the interface can be further simplified. If I click on the sidebar button, it temporarily hides the sidebar. And if I click on the inspector button, it temporarily hides the inspector. So you're left with a very clean view of your tasks. For now, I'm going to turn the sidebar and the inspector back on. Now let's connect to the OmniSync server so that we have some data to work with. So I'll go up to OmniFocus Preferences, click on Synchronization, and then I'll choose OmniSync Server. And I've got a demo account called TS Demo. Then I'll click Sync Now and enter the username and password for that account. And click OK. And it's just letting me know that it's going to replace the data that's currently there. And that's fine. I'll click Sync. So this database was originally created using OmniFocus 1, and I was able to bring it over into OmniFocus 2 without any trouble at all. And all of the perspectives and so forth, as you'll see in a moment, came over as well. Now that we have some data to work with, let's take a closer look at some of the features in OmniFocus 2 for Mac. If I click on Projects, the sidebar is going to expand to show me all of the projects in the OmniFocus database. Just as I could in OmniFocus 1, I can expand and collapse. So if I click on the Personal folder, it's going to collapse that. And if I click on it again, it's going to expand to show the contents. Right now, I have a list of all of the incomplete tasks in my OmniFocus database. But I can focus in on a specific project or a specific folder just by selecting it in the sidebar. So if I click on Car, I'll get all of the tasks related to Car. If I click the view icon on the toolbar, I can control what, what is shown. So right now I'm just showing available tasks. But if I clicked on remaining, it would show all of the ones that are available as well as those that have been deferred. I can also click on show folders and outline to include the actual folders within the list. And I'll click again to hide those options. Now if I click on one of the items in the list, let's say it's the car maintenance single action list, I can specify all of the options for that project. I can also click on any of the tasks and set the options for that task, just like I could in OmniFocus 1. It's now very easy to reorganize items within a project. So if I just click and drag, I can, say, move this one to the top of the list. And if I drag one task on top of another, it creates it as a subtask. I'm just going to undo that change for now. As you may have noticed already, tasks and projects are displayed quite differently in OmniFocus 2. So if I go to Book Annual Service as an example, you'll notice that the top line contains the title of the task, and the bottom line contains some details. So let's hide the inspector for now, and let's add a new task to our single action list. If I press Return now, or if I click the plus button on the toolbar, it's going to create a new task. And let's say we want to buy some new windshield wipers. So I'll say Buy Windshield Wipers. 
Now this is the title of the task. If I press tab at this point, I can enter the context. So I'm going to make this an errand. So I'll just start typing errands and then press tab. And then if I want to, I can define the defer date, which used to be called the start date. Let's say this is something to be done uh, tomorrow. So I'll say 1D for one day. And if there were a due date, I could add this as well. I must say I much prefer the two lines as opposed to the multi-columns that we had in OmniFocus 1. It keeps things much more compact, and OmniFocus behaves more elegantly as the window size becomes narrow. If I want to view my tasks and projects by context, I can click on the Context tab. And similar to OmniFocus 1, I've got a list of all my contexts. And I can hone in on one, let's say, to look at all the, the phone calls that are incomplete. Forecast is a feature that's been available on the iPhone and the iPad for a while now, but this is brand new to the Mac, and it's one of my favorite new additions to OmniFocus 2. I can access this feature simply by clicking Forecast on the sidebar, and I can see each day for the next month how many items are due. So today is March 27th, and there's a 2 in the calendar indicating there are two items that are due today that are still incomplete. If I wanted to jump ahead to a specific date, let's say April 1st, I can see specifically what's due on April 1st. I can further customize this view if I click on the view icon and I could choose to show only one week in the sidebar. I can also choose to show deferred items if I want. And I can have calendars appear here as well. And this can be really handy so you can look at how booked up you are, you are that day compared to how many items you have due and just make sure you're setting yourself up for success. And I'll click the view icon again to hide these options. And next, let's have a look at the flag tab. So when I click on flagged, I see a list of all of the tasks that are flagged. I find flags very useful. I use them to indicate tasks that I'd like to get done today that aren't necessarily due today. So this gives really handy access to these tasks. The review feature of OmniFocus has also been completely revamped and it's now very similar to the review feature of the iPad. So I can access that by clicking on the Review tab. And now I see a list of all of the projects that are, are up for review. And it's just a matter of going through them one by one. I select the project. I can make any changes, additions. I could even complete the project at this stage. And then when I'm happy with it, I click Mark Reviewed and I go to the next one on the list. If you've spent some time creating perspectives in OmniFocus 1, you'll be happy to hear that these are available in OmniFocus 2 without any further work. So I can go up to the Perspectives menu, and let me choose one of mine. I've got one called Important, which shows all tasks that are either due or flagged that are incomplete. So you'll notice that as soon as I selected that, Important appeared on the sidebar. If I want specific perspectives to be available through the sidebar, I can go up to the Perspectives menu and choose Show Perspectives, and then click the star beside the ones that I want to appear in the sidebar. I'm going to add the Waiting For one, I'll add Available and Important. And you'll notice as I click those stars, these items appeared on the sidebar, and these will be permanently available from now on. I'll close the Perspectives window for now. And just before we wrap up, I want to show you one of my favorite new features in OmniFocus 2 for Mac, and that's called Quick Open. I can access Quick Open either by going to the File menu and choosing Quick Open, or by pressing Command-O. And there's also a Quick Open button on the toolbar. So I'm going to click that now. And at this point, I can type a name of a perspective, a folder, a project, or a context. And I'll be taken right to that view of my tasks and projects. So let's say I'm planning a trip to Ireland and I just thought of something else to add to my project. I could just start typing. I'll type the word Ireland and then press return. And I'm taken right to that project and I can make any changes and additions that I need to. There's much more that I could show you, but I hope this at least gives you a good taste of OmniFocus 2 for Mac. And we'll have much more in-depth information, including articles, tutorials, courses, and webinars, when Learn OmniFocus launches. If you're not already on the list, you can add yourself to the mailing list and stay in the loop by going to learnomnifocus.com. And also follow us on Twitter, at LearnOmniFocus. And if you visit technicallysimple.com, you'll find more information on an online course called Holistic Productivity that features OmniFocus and other outstanding productivity apps for Mac and iOS. Thanks very much for watching and warm wishes from Vancouver, Canada.